I think that I think with someone like Sajid, bro, I think he's a good guy all around. And I think Manhajan, he's he's not Madhali and he's not really like that. He just come out of Med Medina, I think so. You know, he he went there, he studied that, their stuff and whatever. He came out. I think he's he he likes you. I think he he loves you as a brother, and I think that. You know, what's happened in a sense is unfortunate, but in another sense, it's allowed you personally, because I saw the last video that you've done, it's allowed you to come out and really show your skills in terms of Islamic studies. I think in terms of a presentation, it's probably the most, uh, it's the best presentation you've done where you've shown Islamic studies knowledge. So it's, it will, and that's what it done with me, I'll be honest. When I was dealing with the Madkhalis, they were attacking me vehemently, like Abu Ayyad and these guys and that. And... I was taking it with a pinch of salt, but at the same time, I was taking it personally, very personally. And the mistakes that I made is that I took it too personally. Okay. And that's no one will, yeah, any, will disagree. I had to make, offer so many apologies to them. And, you know, so, because of, you know, I'm a reactive character, that's, I'm an impulsive guy. And so, obviously, some of the stuff they said, I responded in a bad way. However, the good thing that came out of it is that they really pushed me to do some studies that I would not have otherwise done. For example, I really invested a lot of time with Ibn Taymiyyah. So much, I would not have read that much if it wasn't for them. So I have to thank them for this. Because, you know, it's your enemies that will actually sharpen you up more than your friends. Or mm -hmm. it's your adversaries that will help you out more. Like, you know, so for example, when I, when I go to do jujitsu or grappling or whatever, and I'm dominating the guys and I'm having a good time, which is what happens 95% of the time. But then, uh, that, that sounded like a great <laughs> praise. No, it's because of my size. If you're big and... It's what happened. You dominate. You get this delusion. But then when someone comes out, he's ADCC guy or this and that, or and he starts messing you about and putting you in a position, and I, I think about that the whole day. I'm thinking I need to change my my strategies. I need to do this. I need to do that. Same thing with Dawa. Uh, and this might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. We have to rectify our intentions. But it it did sharpen me up. Wallahi. It, like you know, I started with them maybe two three years ago. Three years ago, I think it was. I don't know when it was. It forced me to go into the but, uh, Buton Kutub Salaf. The, the books of the Salaf. It forced me to go into Ibn Taymiyyah's uh, Aqwal and speech and this and that. It it forced me to retract certain things. It forced me to even question my own ego, like on a spiritual level, to humble myself. So it was, for, in terms of dealing with them, I benefited so much from them. I benefited more from the Madkhalis than they probably benefit from themselves. Yani, one Madkhali to another Madkhali, how they benefit. It's not how I benefited from them. Because if you think about Abu Ayat, he wrote a 600-page book on me. Like, I, he would not do that for any of his students. He would not write, write a 600 page uh, taqreer, um, you know, marking or anything for any of his students. But he wrote a 600 page book on me. I feel quite, I actually thought I'd be paying you to find my mistakes. I would actually pay you for it. You're doing it to me for free because of, of ego issues or because you have a grudge against me, but you've helped me. So, the way I look at it now is I look at it in a completely different way. I say that these guys have really helped me, all of them. All of these guys from different stripes of Salafism, they've they've forced me to become a stronger person, a better person. And it's effectively, it, you know, especially because we're doing da'wah to non-Muslims and stuff like liberals and feminists, this actually helps with that stuff. You'll be very, I, I feel like it's helped me with that stuff because it's, it's like, you know, when there's a, going back to a soccer example, there's there's the, the if you like, the, the National League or like you have the Premier League here, the best league for soccer. And then you have the international stuff like the World Cup. So this is when Muslims kind of refute each other and stuff like that. The negative is it can confuse the awam, the negative, whatever, but there's a positive, which is that we're strengthening each other up so that when we do go out, our swords, our swords are sharp with the sharpening that's happened with, from within our own community. So there's, I feel like there's a positive there, Akhi. And, and some will say, well, the scholars of the past didn't refute and they didn't do this stuff and that. The scholars of the past did refute each other and the, the poets of the past, like al farazdaq and Al-Jarir, very famous. They used to have naqa'id, like these poems which you're feeding each other and stuff like that. They were funny. If you read them now in Arabic, you would laugh because of how, like al farazdaq said to Al-Jarir that, you know, I'll kill you. I'm going to find you. I'm it's how personal it got. And Al-Jarir said that I heard that someone said they're going to kill you. So give them the great blessings that you're going to have a long life. Like he's making a mockery out of him, you know? <laughs> the, the, the point I'm making is that this has always existed. Uh, yani, so on the one hand, yes, we need to make sure that the way you did it was very nice because apart from a few things here and there, maybe whatever, which can be perceived as personal, because your temperament is quite stoic, I'm I'm angry. Like there was a video I made, <laughs> I shouldn't even mention this, about Sajid one time. 
Mm. Yeah, and I, I I brought the I brought the camera on. I started shouting at him. I I was actually angry. <laughs> My face was red. I was like, how dare you do this? I was like, I was shouting at him. I was shouting at him like he was like, because it hurts more when it's when it's a, when it's a friend of yours or you have love for the brother. And with Sajid and all the Muslims, I have love for the brothers, you know? So I was shouting at him and I had to delete it and apologize. And it's always like, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over again. But the point I'm making to you is, it helped me. I think you'd be better at it than me because... You, you, because of your temperament, because you have a good presentational style, um, and all these kind of things, but I would say don't engage in it too too much because it can actually derail you from what the ummah really needs you. Uh, since they've got your number, like since they've started with you now, you're gonna have it's like a pie chart of your work, your portfolio. Five percent is gonna be required from time to time just to clear up some misconceptions or whatever it is to speak about them. But you know, I, I wouldn't dedicate too much of my time for them because. They see an uphill trajectory with you. They're worried. They're they're threatened. That's what it is. It's they're threatened. But if 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 they didn't speak about you, it would be worrying to you because it's like why didn't they speak about me? Am I not enough of an influence? Now this okay, okay, actually yes, they consider you as so. At the moment, I think um, you're doing the right thing. I think that you know if you just uh, from time to time, one video here or there. You know, but don't get sucked in because it can become addictive. I'll be honest with you, it can become addictive and it can harden your heart. It can ruin your spirituality. So you're on the prayer and you're praying and you start thinking about what I'm going to say to this guy or what I'm going to refute this one. Uh, you don't want all of that. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have to really examine our own spirituality and don't make the mistakes I did uh, by making it get personal. Because someone like Sajid Akhi, I think he just wanted to be consistent. That's what he wanted to be. He said, I, you know, I've refuted these guys and I've refuted these guys. And I think he didn't even want to do it because the way when when you, when you came about and did your thing and you asked him questions, he didn't really respond. He had a response, yes, but it was more to do with this happened and I was right and whatever. But I don't think he really wants to engage. I think he's got a soft spot for you. I think he's he is definitely not. It's not personal. I think he's just. Um, it's what he believes at the end of the day. It's what he was taught in Medina. I think he genuinely sincere to his belief. 